Well, hello there, the internet. This will be a commuting version of the Reflective Teacher 30-Day Vlogging Challenge from Teach Thought. Because I am going places today. Sorry. I have to keep looking at the road. So I'm about to back out. Today is day 12. There's way too much traffic. And day 12 is how do I see my teaching... Uh, changing over the next five years and for the most part I kind of like the way like the systems that I have going but ideally they'd be very much improved from where they're at right now uh, for example uh, right now I flip my classroom and I would really right now it's very like synchronous so, you know, they watch the videos when I tell them to, and then the next day we all do, like, something together. And I'd really like for it to be more of an asynchronous, like, self-paced style of thing. Uh, more of, like, a mastery-based situation. Uh, which I think could be really good for the kids, because it, it'll allow, it'll really let me differentiate a lot more. And really let the kids, you know move along like faster if they can go faster or take more time on the concepts if they need to go more slowly and so that's really like a three to four year production because it's gonna like it takes a whole year like just getting the videos like let alone anything else and then this year I'm mostly developing my in-class things and tweaking the videos I need fixed and then shooting for next year hopefully should be the year of starting to move more units towards self-paced uh, because a big part of the mastery base is giving them lots of opportunities for assessment and do it sort of like the uh, flip your learning mastery model where um, basically they use Moodle uh, these guys like John Berger and then uh, I can never remember the name of the other guy that he flips with chemistry teachers but they use Moodle to generate like tons of test questions and then it randomly picks like you know the ones so instead of like one or two questions per concept I need like five or six questions per concept and I'll also go into Moodle which has got to be one of the most awkward and terrible things for entering test questions on the face of ever so that's that's probably uh, maybe four years in five years down the road I should be moving to that for especially for my college prep classes and then finding a way to, in to integrate more inquiry with that. And I don't know, those two systems may not be exactly compatible because I do want to do a lot more inquiry, a lot more authentic learning, a lot more like using science to teach science. And a lot of that uh, can't be done indi individualistically. So I guess I'm kind of torn on where I'll be in five years on that one. Uh, for my at-risk kids, I'm, I'm really hoping to be fully PBL by then and somehow, I talked about this in an earlier video, somehow have a way that they're learning the standards that they need to be learning while making hopefully meaningful contributions to, um, to the town, to our community. And that's the really hard one. Like, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of STEM things and lots of like ways that we can be learning about science and math standards. Um, there's not as many that fit the biology standards that the states put out. So that's, that's the part where it's really tricky because I'm going to have to be a little creative. You know, how do I, how do I work, you know, I, um, <laughs> mitochondria into something that we're going to improve the city. So probably, probably lots of like projects or maybe we can team up with, uh, there's a school company called the Spy Spot. Uh, stands for science play initiative so maybe we can come up with something where maybe they like work with kids teaching them biology or something maybe like harness a little bit of that like digital learning farm style uh, which is another cool model that I've read about so I don't know, those, those are some ideas that I've been kicking around that maybe that I'm hoping unless I don't know I sit stagnant and get really lazy but I'm hoping at the end of five years I should have something like that really set up and in place so yeah I mean it's the the weird thing about teaching is you know there's this common 
idea that once you just get everything set after like three to five years, you'll just be, you'll be on a roll and you just pull out your things and just go after them and everything will just work out fine. And that's really uh, not, I don't think that's a good like teaching model. I don't think at any point I'm going to have a system where it's just set. I'm like, okay, this is exactly what I want because... I mean, even, even if I get to that point there are, I feel like it's perfect for the group of students I have like right now, I'm not going to have this group of students five years from now. Society's not going to sit still and just be the same for me even five, 10, 15 years from now. I mean, I'm only seven years in. I've got, you know, at least 30 more in me, I'm thinking. So I don't really see a time where I'll be set in my ways. And if I ever do get that way, then somebody needs to tell me so I can get out and make way for somebody who's going to bring some fresh ideas and, you know, mix things up and really challenge the kids to move forward. So there's my ponderings while I look at everywhere except the camera while I drive around for a commuting version of the 30-day challenge. Uh, what do you guys think? What would you like to see me do in the next five years to bring into my teaching? What ideas do you guys have? Let me know in the comments down below or the video responses that you probably won't do. Thanks for watching.